All right, concept three, discuss the congressional plan of reconstruction and show how it developed out of the weakness of the presidential plan. Because of the dissatisfaction of uh, the pr presidential plan of reconstruction, the congressional leaders developed a plan of their own which carefully retained control of the entire process of reconstruction in their hands. The congressional plan got started with the passage of the Wade Davis bill uh, of 1864 when um, Lincoln was still alive. Uh, the bill was a response to Lincoln's plan of reconstruction and reflected the radical Republicans who sponsored the bill and felt Lincoln was way too lenient. Uh, the bill stipulated that Congress, not the President, was to have jurisdiction over the process of reconstruction. Republicans of all shades feared a revived Democratic Party and, uh, and many in Congress resented the wartime expansion of the executive power by Lincoln. Uh, Lincoln pocket uh, vetoed the bill. This started off a rift over Reconstruction between them and, and that wing of his, uh, of his own party called the Radical Republicans. The term Radical Republicans refers to those who were determined to employ the power of national government to ensure civil and political rights to the newly freed blacks of the South. The Radical Republicans also wanted to establish the supremacy of the Republican Party in national politics and the supremacy of Congress in the federal government. Though at first small during Lincoln's years, the Radical Republican faction during the latter part of Johnson's administration managed to dominate the Republican Party. Thaddeus Stevens, one of the uh, leaders of the Radical Republican summarized the group's feelings with the following statement. The southern states ought never to be recognized as capable of acting in the Union or of being counted as valid states until the Constitution shall uh, have been so amended as to secure perpetual ascendancy of the party of the, uh, of the, party of the Union." Unquote. Um, if you haven't seen um, Lincoln with uh, not the vampire Lincoln, but uh, with um, Daniel Day-Lewis, uh, Tommy Lee Jones pl plays an excellent um, depiction of Thaddeus Stevens. So um, if you haven't seen that film, I highly recommend it and really uh, tune into uh, Thaddeus Stevens' character in this, in, this, uh, in this film. The party was the Republican Party, and the amendment was... Uh, the 15th passed in 1870. The amendment provided for suffrage for blacks, which in turn accomplished two things. It fulfilled the moral obligation to the blacks and satisfied the humanitarian and the liberal wing of the Republican Party. It also created a flourishing Republican Party in the South uh, for years to come. The reason for Stevens' comment was that if the southern states returned a solid Democratic counterpart to Congress, as appeared inevitable under Lincoln's Reconstruction Plan, a reunited Democratic Party would win the, uh, the next presidential election and possibly have a majority in both, House and, uh, both houses of Congress. Hence, the stage was set for conflict between presidential and congressional plans of Reconstruction and a motive to move both Lincoln and Johnson from office became uh, clear. Um, so, you know, we, we finally remember uh, Lincoln as probably one of the greatest presidents of the United States, and justly so, but it's important to understand at the time, uh, Lincoln uh, was uh, not very popular with, um, with many people in the country, including people in his own party, the Republican Party. Um, on December 4th, uh, 1865, Congress met for the first time since the Lincoln assassination, and since Johnson had been uh, and, and since Johnson had been in office, at the time Congress refused to endorse Johnson's Reconstruction efforts. Consequently, they formulated a joint committee of 15 from both the House of Congress to examine from both houses of Congress to examine the issue of suffrage and Southern representation. The joint committee of 15 developed the theory that theory and set the place of Congressional Reconstruction. The most influential members of the committee was Thaddeus Stevens. 
Stevens, along with the rest of his congressional colleagues, was determined to impose black suffrage on the states of the South. The committee declared that uh, the South had no state government and that Congress alone could restore them and impose such conditions for readmission um, as it deemed necessary. The Congressional Plan of Reconstruction can thus be summarized as, as the following. Um, a prerequisite to readmission to the Union, uh, the southern states had to guarantee uh, black male suffrage uh, in the South. Um, and a right to hold office as well. Ex-Confederate leaders were disqualified from holding uh, public office. The southern states had to repeal their black codes. And finally, Congress felt it had the power to reconstruct the ex-Confederate states and that uh, both President Lincoln and Johnson were not, um, as both President Johnson and John, uh, Lincoln were not protecting the rights of blacks and were giving away the fruits of victory. So power goes to, to, to the Congress. Uh, when the southern states pr uh, proved unresponsive, Congress passed um, the Civil Rights Act of 1866 over the veto of Johnson. So this, this begins a trend during Reconstruction. Um, Congress will pass various bills through um, this phase of Reconstruction, congressional phase of Reconstruction. Johnson would uh, would veto them, and Congress would override the veto because they had a two-thirds majority vote. Uh, when the Southern, um, so the Civil Rights Act of 1866 provided that the um, that blacks were citizens of the United States and forbade states to discriminate among their citizens because of color or race, as they uh, had with the black codes. Uh, to the passage of the act marked a turning point in Reconstruction. From this point on Congress and not the President was in control. Um, because of widespread doubt as the constitutionality of the Civil Rights Act, the 14th Amendment, Amendment was formulated by the Joint Committee of 15. The amendment was sent to the states for approval in June of 1866 and became part of the Constitution in 1868. Uh, like the Civil Rights Act of 1866, the amendment was designed to guarantee the civil rights of blacks against unfavorable legislation like the Black Codes by the states. The amendment accomplished this by defining national, national, citizen, national citizenship to include blacks. It also, um, through the protection of the federal government around uh, the rights of blacks, rights which might be violated by the states. The significance of the amendment was that for the first time, the federal government took upon itself the protection of the rights of life, liberty, and property of the individual. These rights that the states could um, not invade from um, the beginning distinguished our federal system. And so in many ways, the 14th Amendment basically uh, says it infused the principles of the Declaration of Independence within the Constitution. When 10 of the former Confederate states refused to ratify the amendment, Congress was left with no alternative but to take more drastic measures to protect the rights of blacks. As a result of the friction between Johnson and Congress in 1866, the congressional elections of that year gave Republicans two-thirds of each House, both of the uh, representatives and of the Senate giving the radical Republicans effective control of Reconstruction. The opposition to Johnson and the uh, recent congressional elections uh, resulted in a series of far-reaching me measures being passed. The importance of these measures uh, collectively called Reconstruction Acts of, of March 1867 nullified the whole presidential plan of Reconstruction. The most important of these uh, was the first Reconstruction Act of March 1867. The act declared that no legal government had first um, legal government had existed in any state except Tennessee. It also uh, divided the territory of the South into five military districts uh, subject to military commanders who were charged with the responsibility of protecting life, liberty, um, and property throughout their districts to get out from under military regime and to reestablish their rights, each state would have to provide um, 
by universal male suffrage, a new electorate and constitutional convention. This convention would be set up based on black and white suffrage. It, also, um, it was also necessary for the state legislature to ratify the 14th Amendment. The, first, the, the principal task incumbent upon the military commanders was the creation of new electorates and the establishment of new governments. This new electorate was made up of a coalition of three groups. Blacks, carpetbaggers, carpet baggers, and scalawags. <laughs> um, blacks uh, held th few offices during Reconstruction. With a few exceptions, blacks never shared in, in the spoils of office in a proportion to their numbers. Carpetbaggers were northerners who um, had returned to the south to farm uh, businessmen looking for good investments and government agents who, for one reason or another, decided to stay in the south. Scalawags were made up, and again, carpetbaggers and scalawags are derogatory terms uh, by white southerners opposed to the reconstruction, congressional reconstruction. But scalawags were made, uh, made up the largest single element in radical reconstruction. They were southern planters, merchants, and uh, industrialists uh, who turned Republican. They were also willing to cooperate with blacks and carpetbaggers to advance their own interests. This electorate chose uh, constitutional conventions which drafted new state constitutions and franchising uh, 703,000 th 703, blacks, 627,000 whites as registered voters. The new government also disenfranchised 150,000 ex-Confederate leaders. This resulted in black uh, voters being the majority in five states, Alabama, Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, and South Carolina. By the summer of 1866, reconstructed governments had been set up in eight of the southern states. The other three, Mississippi, Texas, and Virginia, were reconstructed in 1870. Um, after the legislation of the reconstructed states had been ratified, the 14th and 15th Amendments, Congress formally readmitted, um, readmitted them to their normal relationship with, um, in the Union by seating their elected representatives and senators. As soon as the supremacy of the new government appeared reasonably secure, Congress withdrew the military governments. Thus, from 1867 to 1877, the radical Republicans controlled most of the reconstructed states of the South. Their aim was to ultimately establish congressional supremacy in the American government system through um, through the Reconstruction Acts of March 2, 1867, and by the impeachment of Johnson in February of 1868. Some of these acts which Congress passed in order to carry into effect its uh, Reconstruction policy were most likely unconstitutional, but the attitude of radical Republicans was well expressed by General Grant when he said of legislation, quote, much of it no doubt was unconstitutional, but it was hope that the laws enacted would serve their purpose before the question of constitutionally, constitutionally could be submitted to uh, the judiciary and decided uh, the, decision, the decision obtained, unquote. So, in other words, try to get as much done as possible to reconstruct this, the South the way the Republicans wanted uh, before uh, the Supreme Court got its hands on it. There were... Uh, there was uh, one major weakness with the uh, Reconstruction Act, which was the radicals and, and Congress took care uh, took care with the second uh, Reconstruction Act of March 1867, called the Command of the Army Act. The Command of the Army Act required that the president issue all military orders through the um, General of the Army, U.S. Grant. Because the first Reconstruction Act divided the South into five military districts, the president would technically be in charge of Reconstruction. Also, March 2, 1867, Congress passed the Tenure ten of Office Act, which prohibited the president from removing officials uh, from office which uh, had been appointed with the approval of the Senate. After Johnson dismissed, President Johnson had dismissed the Secretary of War Stanton from the office in 1868, Congress voted for impeachment, so they basically set him up. The House of Representatives drew up 11 articles of impeachment, including alleged violations of the Ten-Year of Office Act, the Command of Army Act, with 
and with attempting to bring disgrace and ridicule upon Congress. Um, by one vote, Johnson avoided conviction and removal. Oops. Um, re, um, by one vote, Johnson avoided conviction and removal from office as seven Republican senators broke with the party leadership and voted for acquittal. Johnson's impeachment uh, proved to be an important turning point in our history for it. If it had succeeded, the radical Republicans would have established the principle that Congress may, have, may remove a president not for high crimes and misdemeanors as required by the Constitution, but for purely political reasons. Uh, the, the Compromise of 1877, which came as a result of the election of 1876, brought an end to uh, political reconstruction under Congress, and which we'll talk about in um, Concept 4. So I'll talk to you guys later. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.